Safari here on Wild Guess. Hope everybody's ready for a wild time because we have two very, very intrepid and sharp looking teams, the Aardvarks and the Antelopes. And they're going to be battling it out very shortly, toe to toe, paw to paw, tooth and nail, and whatever you want, trying to win this contest. And they better be sharp too because we have questions for you based on just about every kind of animal you can possibly think of. Even a few that even I don't know about. And well, I was raised in the jungle, as you might know. Okay? So, <laughs> like hang on tight. Oh, no, sure. <laughs> hang on tight. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to learn some things along the way. And, of course, we have some very valuable prizes for all of our contestants Ooh. here on Wild Guess. Okay? <laughs> Let's meet our challengers, shall we? Over here, the Aardvarks, led by the lovely and talented Linda Berry, our very own resident loony. <laughs> Thank you, Neil. You say the nicest things. Well, I have a fabulous team today on the Anteaters. I'd like you to meet Josina and Eric. They are both 10 years old. Mm -hmm. um, Josina makes her own jewelry. In fact, she's wearing one of her bracelets. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. She does embroidery, beautiful embroidery. Lovely. She's promised to make me some bracelets later. We have our mascot, Rocky, here today, Rocky the Raccoon, to help us and cheer us on. Aha. And Eric is interested in baseball, and he loves nature. And he would love to own, or possibly win on the show, a red Lamborghini. A red Lamborghini. This guy's <laughs> going for the gold. Well, we'll see what we can do for Eric. Uh, congratulations and good luck to you guys. Thank you. All right, because you're going to need all the help you can get. Yes, indeedy. Because challenging you are the antelopes. Oh. And their team tamer today, of course, is our very own panda white, <laughs> Marilyn Smith. Hi, Marilyn. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thanks, Neil. And on my graceful team, we have Ryan and Elisa. And uh, Ryan and Elisa are 10 years old, and, and I'm 10 as well. We established that in the dressing room. And uh, Ryan, he likes to collect stamps and baseball cards. He plays soccer and baseball and bowls and also figure skates. And he has a nickname called McNugget. Ooh. And Elisa likes swimming and gymnastics. And and also, uh, aside from dancing, she's taking karate. Oh, and uh, you better watch it over there because she's learning how to bash up bricks with her head. Well, yes. So we won't we're touch there. You. We're very careful how I uh, pose my questions to Elisa. You better okay. watch it, Neil. Well, just so we know who we're dealing with here, uh, Aardvarks, a little description of your team. So we'll gauge your behavior by this. You are Aardvarks, and you are long snouted creatures. You're known for your burrowing abilities, and you're also known as African ant bears. So bear that in mind while the game goes on, okay? And your opponents, of course, antelopes, very swift-moving creatures, very fleet of foot. And <laughs> you are known to move up to 50 kilometers per hour. How's Whoa, that, okay? We are dust. And you better be okay. very quick today on those buzzers, I'll tell you, okay? Let's meet our studio audience. Hi, everybody. How you doing? <laughs> all right. Welcome aboard. We're all going to have a lot of fun on Wild Guests. Why don't we find out how things work here? Come on up here to the big board, okay? okay. Now, the way we score things on Wild Guess is really very simple. In fact, it's so simple, even I can understand it. Okay, we have six different categories of questions. We have living proof, triviology, creature feature, call of the wild, catnips, and monkey business. Okay, and the first question for every category is worth 30 points. All righty? Now, if you don't get that question answered correctly, don't worry about it because you can do what? You can take a wild guess. That's the name of the game, okay? And that's worth 20 points if answered correctly. Now, use that wisely, because if you don't answer that question correctly, then your opponents get a chance to answer the question for 10 points, okay? Ooh. So a little bit of strategy is involved there. Now, catnips is the only category that's a little bit different. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on. But just in the event of a tie toward the end of our game, we will have our sudden death catnip buzzer match, <laughs> which can get very scary, all righty? So, Let's get on with the game. Why not? Okay, we had our, uh, okay. had our very, very highly secretive coin toss backstage a little while later, and the Aardvarks won the honor of going first in today's match. So the first question will go over to you, and it is a living proof question. So watch your monitors and listen up. You're going to see four animals in action, one of which is different from the others. You pick the odd animal out. Now watch your monitors, and you'll see four 
whales. Three of these whales spend most of the year in the Arctic Sea. The other whale goes south for the winter. Which one is he? Is it the white whale or the beluga whale? Is it the narwhal? Is it the killer whale? Is it the humpback whale? One, two, three, or four. What do you think, Aardvarks? It's up to you. Go ahead. For 30 You're points. Thinking? They got an answer. They would like to go with number two, Neil. You think it's number two, do you? Well, in fact, that buzzer means a no-no. Oh. No, it's incorrect. Now, you can take a wild guess. What do you say? Well, would you like to go for the wild guess? Sure. Yep, we're going to go gonna for the it? wild guess. Okay, what do you think? For 20 points. Okay. Is it one, three, or four? The white whale, the killer whale, or the humpback whale? The okay. heads are being right. put together. That's your final decision? Okay. You think it's number four, the humpback whale? You would be absolutely correct. Congratulations, oh, Aardvarks, yes. for 20 points. You can just it yes, indeed. The humpback whales migrate to the uh, polar waters to feed in the summertime. In the winter, they return to the tropical waters to give birth to their young and probably to get a suntan as well. Why not? <laughs> okay, our next question. Goes back over to the antelopes. Your turn to catch up here. It is another living proof question, so we'll listen up. All eyes on your monitors. These are uh, three of these four aquatic birds eat small fish, frogs, pond snails, and insects. The other one eats mostly grains and sedges. Which one is it? Is it the American wood stork? There he is. Is it the great blue heron? There he is. Is it the Canada goose, our very own Canada goose? Or is it a very strange fellow called the horned grebe. And there he is. Mm. What do you think, antelopes, for 30 points? One, two, three, or four? OK, they thought really quickly, and they think it's number four, the horned grebe. The horned grebe, uh oh, oh you got noise. the buzzer, which means I'm afraid that's incorrect. You want to do a wild guess? What do you think? What do you guys think? Talk about it. Ooh, it's getting intense over here. They're going to try it, I think. OK, which one? Um, oh, which number? Rockus, 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 rockus. Okay, for 20 points and a tie game. Okay. And they think it's number one, the American wood stork. Oh, and the Ooh. wild guest didn't pay off this time. Your okay. challengers, the yard bars get a chance We've for 10 points. We've got our thinking caps on here, Neil. A 50-50 chance here. The great blue heron or okay. the Canada goose. Neil, we think it's number two. Two, the great blue heron, and you get a buzzer, I'm afraid. <laughs> so I guess it's it was our goose. very own Canada goose, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yes, the Canada goose eats mostly oh, vegetable matters, such as grains, grasses, Rushes and sedges. So nobody picked up on that one, but don't worry about it. The game is very young yet. Okay. Let's move ahead now into our triviology department. And this is an ant or an art bark question. Sorry, back to the art barks. Everybody, watch this. Okay, here we go on the monitors. When beavers mark out their territory, they secrete an oil containing chemicals which can cure illness. Now, during the 16th and 17th centuries, beavers were hunted for this curing chemical. Which of the following does beaver oil contain? Mm. Is it vitamin C? Is it aspirin? Is it alcohol? Or is it insulin? What do you think? Aardvark's now ahead by 20 points. Well, Neil, they've already decided. They've grabbed the card. They're going with number wow. two. Wow, very quick on the draw, and you were absolutely correct. You knew oh, that one right off the bat. Hey, how about a round of applause there? 30 points. Oh, Aardvark's very quick on the draw there. Yes, beavers secrete an oil called castorium. This oil contains salicylic acid, the technical name for aspirin. There's our friend there, the beaver, filling up his jar full of aspirin. Probably got a little headache for chewing down too many trees, undoubtedly. Okay. No doubt. Now we're about to move away. We're going to go fill up our feed our crocodiles right now, and we're going to go to Maryland, who has a little question for folks at home. We have a true and false question right now. The eastern gray kangaroo is capable of hopping at a speed of 64 kilometers or 40 miles per hour. Is that answer true or false? <laughs> Our Wild Guest winners and team runners-up will each receive family passes to African Lion Safari. Thrilled to the animal shows and safari through the exciting world of African wildlife. And family passes to Marineland Niagara Falls, where you will find a world of fun and entertainment. World famous for spectacular marine shows featuring killer whales, dolphins, and sea lions. In addition, our two team winners will each receive a set of hit sticks, a new electronic drum system that allows you to play them in the air. And Pictionary, charades with a difference. Guess words from another player's wild sketches to play this fun, fast game for three or more players. Our winners will also receive a limited edition VHS home video cassette of baby animals. 
an award-winning hour-long special by Keg Productions. The team players with the highest overall score at the end of our 26-week series will each receive a one-week family vacation at Stanton House on beautiful Sparrow Lake, one of Canada's finest resorts, a vacation the entire family will enjoy. What the heck is the deal with this kangaroo thing? Okay, well, the eastern gray kangaroo, he can actually jump. He can, oh, sorry, he can run at a mile, uh, 64 kilometers per hour and 40 miles per hour. So the answer is true. And he can also jump 13 meters or 40 feet when he's mad. Whoa. Neil. So keep him, keep him kind. Be nice to your kangaroos. That's it's right. a basic lesson there. Okay, it's time once again for our wild guest limerick of the week, everybody. Whoa. All right. Yeah. Here we go. Antelope and aardvarks the subject today. While antelopes run swiftly across the grassy plain, aardvarks burrow for ants beneath the rough terrain. But they have one thing in common, so have another look. They're both found under A in the telephone book. Ooh. Hey, there you Thank go. You Neil, <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, let's talk to our antelopes over here for a little bit. Uh, we have Ryan and Elisa. Ryan, you have a, a question you wanted to ask me. Is that what I understood? Yes, Neil. How do you divide six apples between nine people, leave no leftovers, and give each person an equal piece? I, um, I don't know. You make applesauce. <laughs> applesauce? I should have seen that one coming, boy. Okay. Applesauce. Yeah. Alisa, how are you doing? Fine, how are you? Very good, thank you. But you have a pet? Yes, well, my brother and my father are allergic to pets, so I have a pet rock. Well, that's... Easy to house train, I guess, at least. Yes, a pet rock. Do you have a name for your pet rock? No. You don't? Just no. call Rocky. him Boulder? <laughs> it, it, no, he's not that big. If you put two rocks in the same cage, will they have pebbles later on? Or? Uh, <laughs> you know. Okay, 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 antelopes. Nice meeting you guys. Uh, you're behind by 50 points, but not don't much. worry, because things can change very quickly. In fact, we're going to give you a chance right now, okay? We're going to move into our creature feature. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to uh, read several clues about a certain animal for you antelopes. Then you guess the animal and we'll see a video clip of the animal in its natural habitat. All right, here we go. One of these animals is the only marsupial living in North America. Now marsupials are different from other animals because they carry their young in pouches. So which of the following is the only marsupial living in North America? Is it the kangaroo? Is it the koala bear? Is it the wombat? Or is it the opossum? What do you think antelopes? A chance to come from behind here for the antelope. All right. My team thinks it's number four, the opossum. They're very sure about that, are yes, they? Okay, sure. well, you're absolutely correct. And 30 points goes over to the antelopes. Yes, indeedy. In fact, the opossum is the only marsupial living in North America. When cornered, an opossum is a very strange thing. He curls into a ball and lies on his back with his tongue sticking out. And this is called playing possum, okay? And you'll see a lot of other animals copying this, uh, sort of a playing dead behavior to stay safe from other predators. And I've seen some kids do this when they've been asked to do, clean their room up and whatnot. They play <laughs> possum, you know? Okay, well done. 30 to 50 yes, they score yes. so far. Let's move on for another creature feature. This one goes over to the aardvarks. Here we go. I'm going to read you several clues again describing a certain animal. You guys, please tell me which one it is. Okay. One of the following birds holds the record for building the world's largest nest reaching nine and a half feet or 2.9 meters in diameter all the way across and 20 feet or six meters high. Is it the albatross? Is it the great blue heron, the bald eagle, or the whistling swan? They are thinking, Neil. How are they ever thinking? Gray matter flying everywhere over on the aardvark side. We are going with number three. Number three, the bald eagle, would be the absolutely correct answer. Yes, indeed. <laughs> 80 to 30, the score. Well done, aardvarks. Yes, indeed. The bald eagle holds the record for building the largest nests on the ground or in cliffs or and in trees. These nests can weigh as much as 1,000 pounds or 454 kilograms. That's a heck of a nest. There's our friend, the bald eagle there. That's a bird for life. And little eaglets. <laughs> Okay, terrific. The score now 80 to 30. Uh. Very good work happening here. Okay, over to our triviology department once again. And the antelopes are going to have a shot at this one. Okay, guys? So listen up. Once every 12 hours and 24 minutes, gravitational forces from the sun and moon cause tides to rise and fall. Which of the following has the greatest tides? Would it be the Mediterranean Sea, the English Channel, the Bay of Fundy, or the Mississippi Delta? What do you think? 
One, two, three, or four. Okay. Once My again, team. very, very quick on the, on the it's rebound. Going with oh, four and it's wrong. You got a buzzer there, guys. Okay, that is wrong, but you do have the option of the wild guess. Are they going to do it? Yes, they're going to go for okay, it. Okay, good luck to you. For 20 points. Major discussion going on. Tick, tick, tick. Putting their heads together. Two heads are, in fact, better than one. Yes, they are. And we're going with number two, the English Channel. And that, I'm afraid, also gets a buzzer. Sorry, antelopes. So your opponents, the yardbarks, get a chance to stick their snouts into things right now. <laughs> okay, we are going with number one. And you get a buzzer oh! too, I'm sorry. The answer is in fact Fundy. our very own Bay of Fundy in Nova oh. Scotia. Oh, yes, indeed. Scotia. It has the greatest change in tides. The water level rises and falls about 14.5 meters or nearly 48 feet. That's some kind of tide. They have great surfing down there, apparently. And there you can see where the Bay of Fundy is located on our map. Okay, why don't we uh, have a little talk over here with our current leaders, the Aardvarks. It's now 80 to 30. Ooh. Hi, Aardvarks, Ooh. how you doing? We're doing good. Hi. Good, good. Uh, Eric, mm -hmm. you want a Lamborghini? Is that what I, I heard yes. you talking about? Yeah? yeah that's your favorite sports car, is it? Yeah. Uh -huh. What kind of a car are you driving right now? Uh, <laughs> a Honda. A Honda, okay. Oh, well, you've got, you got a ways to go up then, don't you? Right, okay. Good luck to you. Hope you can get that car soon. Yeah. Josina, how are you doing? Fine. Good. Let me see that bracelet again. Isn't it gorgeous? Super. It's handmade, right? Yep. Good. How, do you have a bunch of those? Not a lot. Not a lot? Yeah. Well, I make them for other people. It takes a lot of time to make one, I guess. Can I put my order in yeah. now, or? <laughs> sure. Okay, well, listen, you guys are doing very well. It's 80 to 30 so far, so hang on to your lead, because the next question game, is coming to you. I'm moving into our Call of the Wild mm -hmm. segment, all right? So, perk your ears up. Let's go to the board. Here we go. <laughs> Call of the Wild. <laughs> okay, now, the sound, you're going to hear a sound in just a moment, okay? And it's the sound of some kind of uh, animal. I want you to help me figure out what kind of animal it is, all righty? Here we go. Listen to this. <laughs> okay, very, very bizarre sound there. Everybody heard that one? Ooh. The sound you just heard was made by an animal living in the wooded areas of Alaska and Canada. Now, this animal can weigh as much as 818 kilograms or 1,800 pounds. Its main predators, besides humans, are bears and wolves. Please tell me what it is. All right, Varks, was it a moose? Was it a muskox? Was it a buffalo or was it a mountain lion? What do you think? Ooh, One, two, tricky, three, Neil. or four. Trying to build a lead up. A very strange call there. They are going with number two, the muskox. The muskox. I'm sorry, you get the big <laughs> ant from the scorekeeper over there. Should we go for a wild guess? Wild guess it? Yes, yes we They're would love to go it. for a wild guess. Okay, go ahead. Okay. For 20 points. What the? Okay, voice? they're ready with their wild guess. They're going with number three. And the wild oh. guess was off. I'm afraid it was not a buffalo. So that means your opponents, the antelopes, get a chance to build their score up by 10 points. They got to make it count yeah, this yeah, so time. Pick up which, which one do you guys think it is? Okay, they think it's number one, a moose. And you're correct. It is, in ah. fact, a moose. Well done, antelopes, making their score 40 points. That's okay. Don't worry. Yes, Very indeed. Good. Hunters often imitate the call of the female moose to lure them from the brushwood. And did you know that moose can live as long as 20 years? In fact, yes. And with a call like that, isn't it lovely that they can? Okay, our next call of the wild goes back over to the antelopes. It's your turn now, guys. Okay, listen to this. No, it sounds sound like, like me with a bad stomach. cold. Yeah. It's very strange, <laughs> yes. Okay, that, in fact, was an animal. The sound you just heard was made by the largest of monkeys living in, naturally in the South American forests. Was it the, the squirrel monkey, the spider monkey, the woolly monkey, or the howler monkey? What do you think, antelope? They think it's the woolly monkey. Wow, they were that one. Oh, it's but a little too quick, maybe, because oh. it's not the right answer. Do you want to take a wild, wild guess? guess? Wild guess, wild yes. guess. They yes. want one, yes. okay. okay. Which one do you think it is? What's it going to be? A very, very strange call that time. Okay. Okay, which one? Oh, there it is. And it's number four, the Howler Monkey. Congratulations, you're correct. The Howler Monkey's right. And we've got a very close game on our hands now. Okay, making it 80 to 60 for the aardvarks. All right, yes, like songbirds, Howler Monkeys defend their territory by vocalizing. They can be heard for miles. I think I had one of those Howler Monkeys sitting behind me at a football game once, in fact. Okay. Now it's time for catnips. Now I warned you, catnips are not unlike, are unlike any other of our questions. In fact, both teams can answer at the same time, and that's what your red buzzers are for, okay? So hands over those buzzers, but be sure to listen to the whole 
question. Because if you hit the buzzer before the question is over, or if you get the wrong answer, you will lose 10 Ooh. points. OK? Here we go. There are, se there are several different species of insects which are often referred to as June bugs. The question is, what type of insect is a June bug? Is it a moth or a beetle? Oh, I think the antelopes were first in the draw there. Okay. A beetle? Correct, for 30 points. Yes, indeedy. They are beetles, in fact. Several different species of brown beetles are often referred to as June bugs, and our antelopes bound ahead by 10 points now. Okay. Maybe not for long, no, because we have another catnip coming up right now. Great. Okay, hands over those buzzers, everybody. The yak is a type of wild and domesticated ox that has black, brown, or white shaggy fur. In which of the following countries would you naturally find the wild yak? Would it be in Tibet or Peru? Whoa, and boy, the aardvarks were very quick on the draw there. What do you think? Tibet. Tibet is correct for 30 points. Boy, you can't keep a good aardvark down. I'll tell you, the wild yak is found in upland plateau of Tibet in Southeast Asia. Well done, okay. And now, Linda, you have something very special for our audience. I yes, think. I have. For you in the audience there, I have a true or false question, so perk up your ears. This is a tricky question. In 1957, a saltwater crocodile was caught that measured 8.6 meters, or 28 feet, and that's from the tip of its snout to the tip of its tail. Is that true or false? Think about that for a moment. Well, you've had a moment to think about my true or false question about the crocodile that was 28 feet long. Is it true or false? It is true. A crocodile was caught in the Norman River, Australia. It weighed over two tons, and it was 8.6 meters, and it was 28 feet long. Oh, that's a big pair of shoes. My goodness. OK, <laughs> <laughs> the score is now 110 to 90, the aardvarks leading as we move into our last round monkey business. So let's get down to the monkey business right now. OK. I'm going to show you an animal. Okay, this animal's going to be engaged in a very peculiar looking activity. It's your job to figure out why he is doing that. Okay, so watch your monitors. You're going to see a male ruffed grouse. There he is. Okay, he's beating his wings and puffing out his chest. What is he doing? Is he A, cooling off on a hot day? Is he shedding feathers in the spring? Is he establishing his breeding territory or is he just too darn fat to fly? Okay, what do you think, Aardvarks? You're in the lead right now, 110 to 90. This can be very crucial at this point. They are going with number one. Number cool one, you off. think? He is cool. Oh, oh, there's the buzzer again, guys. Now you got a chance for a wild guess. Bear in mind that if you're guess? wrong, yeah. your opponent's going to gonna guess. Okay. They're going to go for it. Okay, here we are. One, two, three, or four. One was obviously wrong. Okay, we are going with number three. Number three, establishing his breeding Terry, and you would be correct. Oh, Aardvark yes! for 20 points. Yes, Nita, he Very is establishing good. his breeding turf. Yes, indeed. The North American ruffed grouse can be found from Alaska to Newfoundland and can weigh up to 3.5 kilograms or 8 pounds. Well done. Okay. That's a close one, Neil. We now go over to the antelope. This is your chance to win. Here we go. You're going to be looking at a group of elephant seals on the screen shortly. They're lying on a beach casually digging in the sand. It looks like they're throwing it at each other. Why do elephant seals throw sand at the beach? There they are. Is it because it soothes their skin? Are they digging for clams? Are they establishing their territory? Or are they covering their scent so the polar bears won't plan their dinner menus around them? What do you think? They think it's number one, they're, thu they're soothing their skin? <laughs> You're correct, it is soothing their yeah! skin. That's right. That's close. That's absolutely correct. It soothes their skin. And that's the end of our game. Our aardvarks are the brand new champions here. One through to 120. Thanks, Woo! both teams, for joining yeah! us. Yes! Thank you for joining us. See you next week. Bye-bye now. Thank you, audience. Take care.